assembling scale mail. It's easier than you think. Scale mail is a great way of making wonderful flexible armor that has the maneuverability and agility of chain mail and some of the protection of plate. Not to mention you can inlay all sorts of different colors with different, uh, different metals and, well, colors of scale. So, to do this you only need a few things. Scale nail scales of the appropriate size. Two rings per scale. In my case I'm using split rings because I like the security, but you can use normal butted uh, chainmail links. And a pair of pliers. In this case these are split ring pliers as they make it possible to work with at this sort of speed. Step one of the process is very simple. You need to pre-link all of your scales. Simply take two rings, put them into your pliers, feed the ring on, and then feed a second ring on. There we are. That is a scale that is now ready to be woven into scale mail. Naturally you're going to need a whole lot of these. Depending on the scale of the project you're working on, you're going to need a lot of them. So yeah, make sure you have enough scales before you begin weaving. All of my scales I bought from a company called The Ring Lord. Admittedly, that does involve some uh, shipping costs into the UK, but yeah, they're, they're pretty good quality stuff, so I'm happy to pay the extra amount. I typically pre-link an entire bag. They come in bags of 100 or so, and then we'll just do that 100 before pre-linking the next. Otherwise, you'll be sitting there forever pre-linking and never really getting any progress. All right, let's start off simple. It's easiest to work on scale mill from the back, as you can see. The scale is bent, it is a uh, concave on one side, convex on the other, and you want to work on the rear end, the concave side. Take two scales, on the right hand scale make sure you have the ring, that will link over to the left, open it up, and join it above the jump rings, like so. There you are, you have made your first link. Then, take a second scale. Now this time we're going to join to the right, and you might think that, and you might think that you just open up the ring and join down, but no, no you do not. When you are joining to the right, take the scale you're joining into, flip it over to its front, and then open up the ring and join onto its front side. If you try to do it any other way, you'll find that the scale won't actually flip correctly. As you can see here, the ring needs to come out and under like this. So now we have our three scales, it's time to continue joining down. And the process is incredibly simple. We start on the left hand side of these three scales, but remember, we're joining on the right hand link, which means you need to make sure your scale is inverted. Now, on the right hand scale, we're joining to the left, which means that our scale needs to be facing the correct orientation, i.e. down. And now, if I just bring that around, we have our first diamond set of four. Myself, I prefer to continue working down from here in a long continuous line. But if you prefer, you can assemble your scale mail in several smaller segments and then join the segments together. For example, here I've got two sets of four, and if I wanted to join, for example, these onto here, then we are joining onto the right-hand side, so we flip it over, grab that ring, join it onto the top of our section to create our first join, and again, we're joining on the right-hand side, so we get the next scale down, and tuck it in. If I straighten this out, you can see we've completed the link to the right with these two rings. 
It's always important to remember that, that whenever you're using your pre-linked scales, always make sure you join above the pre-linked rings. With scale nail, you work top to bottom. If you're ever in a position where you need to join a scale to the top of your pattern, you don't join up, simply join down. You can link your scales together however you like. For the sake of simplicity, let me grab this scale, grab the left hand one, join it onto here, and bam, there you go. The upward join is complete. Very simple, and much easier than attempting to do that join upward. Remember, work down. If you decide you've made an error, or you need to dissemble your scales, or perhaps you need to replace a scale because you put the wrong color in or the scale is damaged, then removing a scale is as simple as how you added it. Let's say, for example, that this scale here, let's say this scale was wrong. So, to remove it, we start at the top, open the split ring, and just feed it round. Yeah, that's one loop. Then again, take the next loop, starting at the top, and take that off. As you can see, the scale is now loose from the top and can be very easily removed from the bottom. Now remember, these two rings need to stay on the scale. So when removing it, you need to open the link and remove it from the scale beneath, not from the scale itself. You, need to, you want to make sure that you keep those two jump rings on that scale. And there we go, the scale is now removed. On a pattern of this size, it's going to be extremely floppy and hard to control, because it's lost a lot of its stability. But once you've made a larger piece, removing a single scale will not prevent you from being able to discover which way is up. You may find at the beginning when you're working with your scales, and you've got only a very small number of them, that it, it'll easily look tangled up and mixed up. Just start at the top, and align the scales going down, and eventually you will get it back in order. Now, say this was the replacement scale, and I want to put it back into my pattern. Well, it's easy enough. We simply work from the top down, left to right. So, we start with the left hand scale, with the right hand jump ring. Because we're joining the right ring, we have to flip the scale over, and then bring it down. Then, on the right hand scale, with the left hand jump ring, we join that down. There we are, the scale is already back in action. Then, again, left to right, so the left hand jump ring joins down to the left hand scale. And the right hand jump ring goes down to the right, flip that bottom right scale over, link it in, and there you go. The scale is now back in sequence. With a little bit of readjustment, it should all sit nicely. At first, the concept of making a huge 3000 scale halberk may seem like a daunting prospect, but it really is a matter of time, patience, and just, you know, wanting to get your hands dirty with some scales. And with these basic tips, you now know everything you need to to have a very fundamental grasp of starting to experiment with the scales. And that's the key word, experiment. I must have made three different versions of the s small patches of that made up the, this entire halberk before I actually started working on the main thing itself. As with most things in life, you just have to experiment, keep doing it, keep trying, and eventually, once you've, once you've got it, you can create your 3000 scale halberk that you're very proud of. In the next video, we'll be looking at advanced joining, designing your own inlays for scales, and a couple other tricks that I picked up along the way. But for now, I'm Raven, and that's all from the lair. This is why you take a stealth penalty when you wear scale mail, guys! <laughs>